Good morning. Welcome back to another vlog. So today I have an early appointment, so I thought I would grab some breakfast at Tim Hortons. So I'm going to grab a everything bagel with cream cheese and some OJ. Tim Hortons has really good OJ, so I find orange juice usually gives me heartburn, but the one at Tim Hortons usually doesn't hurt my stomach at all. In Canada, there's like a Tim's at every corner, I swear. I won't complain about the gas prices. I think I've done that enough and I'm done complaining, but they are very high. I know we're all feeling the same pain. So I just put some gas into my car and I'm ready to head to my appointment. It was pretty cold and rainy today. Uh... Hi everybody. It's Ray. It's Life and Vibe. Let me take me up and Chantel down. Hi everyone. Anyway, I am here today because we are trying to solve the mystery of the appointment that Chantel potentially went on on this day that she started out on this video. And so I'm just going to go and kind of move along a little bit about uh, her video and show in the planner what she had as the date. But before we do that, let me just make sure that I run a couple of disclaimers just to make sure that I do not get in trouble with anybody uh, in YouTube or get anybody like uh, Miss Chantel, otherwise known as Esther McDonald, otherwise known as Sarah Lee, from trying to strike down my channel. All right, everybody. So, yeah, if you do like this type of content, I'm trying to add a little extra music there because I'm just doing this through the stream yard. I'm trying to keep a good connection. You might hear some ambient noise in the background. That's because we're having a really big thunderstorm here in Virginia Beach at the moment. So, yeah, we're very wet, very rainy here. So, yeah, let's try to get to this uh, planner that she brought up. I'm going to go back over to her. Uh, channel there and we're just going to kind of set up the scene uh for taking a look at her video so let me just share this again with miss chantel we're going to go along a little bit uh where she talks about her planner and what she had planned for that day so just bear with me one second because it's the same video here she is she's showing her planner it's right here she does it very quick so you actually have to kind of freeze frame it. Okay, right here. So she is putting here, obviously, all this stuff she's up to, but had written here HR at 8.45 a.m. in Ottawa. So there's been a lot of <laughs> the speculation as to potentially what this HR could be. What is it? Let me make me small. What is HR? Is it human resources? Is she getting a job? Because suddenly she's not going to Kuwait like I think she wants to because there's conflict going on. Is it health review? Is she trying to do some type of health review for a visa? Is it something to do with her visa? I wondered if it was for her taxes because somebody had put into my comments h and R Block, and they are open with offices in Canada, and it's time to file those Canadian taxes. So is that what the HR is? Is it to do with her heart? People wondered about her heart rate. Somebody mentioned that maybe it was connected to cardiology at a Ottawa hospital. What could this HR be? 
There were so many things. Hormone replacement was another one that I heard. There have been so many speculations as to what could this possibly be. And I think many of us have been wondering. But I think I have a sleuth in my community who left something that I found quite interesting. Maybe solving the mystery, at least maybe, potentially. Maybe we can throw this one into the ring. I think this is a really good one. So let me just bring up the uh, information that this person uh, wanted to add into my comments. And it's the first time I'd heard this one. So it intrigued me. And I got a little bit more and started to look into it. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what I found. So I'm going to add this to the stage. Yeah, you can see I got the Canadian flag back there. Okay. So this was interesting. So I had, uh, and I always love the people who have cats. Don't mess with cats. Okay, Chantel? Don't ever mess with cats. If you've not seen that documentary, you probably should. Okay? <laughs> and you messed with cats, girl. You messed with a lot of cats. So they're, they're, they're investigating. And so thank you so much to Brooke. I hope you don't mind me having used and thanking you so much for the sleuthing in the community and leaving these comments. I always want to recognize those who do add so much to this community because it is a community that needs to help us potentially solve this mystery. So she said, I think it's HR immigration. I was like, HR immigration, what's this? So I said, I think I've got to, to investigate this a little bit further. And uh, so thank you, Brooke, for putting me into this idea, because this brings a very interesting turn of events, potentially. So remember, she's got this appointment. She, her mood has been uh, very interesting. And a lot of us think it's obviously because she can't potentially get out to Kuwait very easily with everything that's been happening um, in the Middle East and international airspace and potentially just a lot of difficulty actually traveling into that part of the world. And that maybe because she's been eating horribly <laughs> ice cream, pizza, you name it, she's been consuming it. So that was like something I looked at. So yeah, let's just, you know, before we get into looking into the St. John immigration, let's listen to a little bit more about kind of what her attitude has been like uh, with her audience. Because, you know, Foodie obviously loves a mystery. So we're going to get over to him. I'm going to show you some of the stuff she's been saying. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> let me just make sure that I'm small. Okay, let me make sure I take this down. All right, let me make sure I add this Foodie to the stage. There we go. All right, let's hear some of the things that she's, because she's really been going off about wanting to go back to Kuwait and so forth. But uh, this was interesting. So let's have a listen. No, it's not human resources. Well, I just proved you wrong, Kelly Goral. So what else? People think changing your mind is lies. I know they don't, they, they're, they're very slow. That's all. That's just, I can't help it. You lied about eating vegan food. Actually, I joke about that with you guys, but it actually was vegan food. It actually was <laughs> vegan nuggets. Go back and look at it. Go back and look at the video. <laughs> that's like, that's such reaching. Who cares about that? Can you name something in this century? <laughs> so if you make plans, okay, let's see this logic here. Now let's see Kelly Girl's logic. If you make a plan to go to the mall and you say, I'm going to the mall today. I'm going to go to the mall at two. And then somebody comes home and finds you home at five. And they're like, I thought you were going to the mall. Why'd you lie? Oh, maybe I didn't change my mind. I didn't feel like going to the mall. Like, you know, <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to include that because that's Chantel's response to somebody asking her if she was scamming her audience out of money 
in the PayPal scam when she said she was trying to get apartment in Canada. And now she goes on to talk about further in this video about not wanting to be in Canada, wanting to get back to Kuwait. She misses Kuwait. She loves Kuwait. She just wants to be in Kuwait. Kuwait's where her home is and so on and so forth. And so I think it's interesting when you discover a little bit about what HR immigration do. So unfortunately, I would need to kind of, you know, I usually use like word searches in order to try to find places in these videos very quickly. And uh, it would be too many tabs open probably for my computer to handle, to open all these tabs. I'd rather have my investigative tabs. But trust me, she goes on and says that she is so much wanting to get out, as we know, to <laughs> Kuwait. She's done with Canada. She doesn't want anything to do with Canada. She's just got some appointments here in the country that she needs to get completed with and so on and so forth. Because we know she likes to use up the resources of the country. Okay, so let me get over and show you this other interesting information. So, who are HR Immigration? Is it to help Chantel get herself to Kuwait, potentially? Is that is that what she's trying to do? Is she trying to get immigration status to Kuwait? Is that what she's up to? Let's see. Let's see. All right, we're going to share this tab instead. All righty. All right. Let's see who HR immigration is. Let's see if we're solving the mystery as to Chantel's 830 appointment in Ottawa. Now, this is a office that is located in Ontario, Canada. And I'll show you the distance between Cornwall and Ontario uh, very soon. So Chantel is obviously a notorious liar. So her having written Ottawa in the uh, planner could be potentially just to throw people off or just get people talking or like the person did in her chat, as you heard her responding, asking her what HR meant. And she has no seeming intention to let anybody know what it means. So this is a company called HR Immigration. And they are Canadian immigration specialists. And what they specialize in is getting rid of the stress and confusion of the immigration process to move forward with your new life and to speak with a specialist, like an immigration specialist consultant today. Now, I don't think that Chantel is without the capacity of writing Ottawa instead of Ontario just to throw people off. But wanting to put the HR just because she, she needs to have some, you know, mystery and she needs a little bit of uh, something worth watching on her channel. So it says here, and this is interesting because remember, she's not trying to get Salah to Canada. He's no interest. In they want to go off to Malaysia and do all this traveling. Well, this says immigration applications shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it says just figuring out how, thank you, Brooke, figuring out how to apply is confusing. Filling out and filling your documents alone is overwhelming. And it goes on to say, let us do the heavy lifting. Focus on what you care about, family, friends, work, or school. Immigration processes can take time. We walk with you, supporting you throughout the entire process and celebrate your achievements with you. What are you waiting for? Your future. So one error, one missing document can be the difference between success and failure. HR immigration, full range of services. Express entry. And this is an express entry into Kuwait. This is express entry into Canada. <laughs> Spousal sponsorship. Oh, funny that, hey? Spousal open work permit. Hmm. So there's two things here that go along with spousal. Very interesting. And there's a number there. Let's go on. Okay. So they have all these different types of uh, ones. So let's uh, take a look at the sponsorship of the spouse, shall we? <laughs> oh, girl, is this what you're up to? Trying to get Salal into the country? 
so that he can try to abandon you to for somebody new? Because that'd be that. This is interesting, because especially with everything that's happening at the moment. He, he may be able to come in on some type of refugee. I'm not sure. And it says that they specialize in preparing and submitting spousal sponsorship applications. Spousal sponsorship applications allow a Canadian. Let me hit some water because I'm blah, 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 my mouth is dry. It's that time of the year for the allergy meds. Spousal sponsorship applications allow a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada to sponsor their spouse or common law partner to come to Canada permanently. With this type of application, the relationship with the spouse has to be genuine. Documents you need. Documents will need to be provided to prove the genuineness of the relationship. As a sponsor, they are required to provide basic needs for the person that they are sponsoring. Inside the Kia? Are the basic needs going to be met inside the Kia? Types of applications. There are two types of spousal uh, sponsorships. The Outland spousal sponsorship is the application will be processed through the visa office in the sponsored spouse's country of citizenship or where they legally reside if outside Canada. If you and your spouse live together in Canada, you can, well, we know they don't do that. Okay, applying under this category will make you eligible to appeal a refusal. You will not have the rights to appeal for an inland spousal application. And then you can have what's known as an inland spousal sponsorship. And it has to be the application will be processed in Canada. And you and your sponsor must live together. The person being sponsored must have temporary status in Canada as a worker, student, or visitor. The person being sponsored may be eligible for an open work permit. So is the there okay so probably most likely he would be needing to probably go under this open work permit i don't know this one he would have to go um through kuwait and make his application there um i believe that would be through salah having to do the work and he doesn't seem like a worker so Let's see. Let's see what the open uh, work permit for the spouse is regarding. It says, you know, move forward with your life. Your spouse partner can work in Canada. Oh, lowercase c for Canada? Really? HR immigration? Is, can I be your copy editor? How much does, I hear copy editors can make a lot of money. Look how quick I spotted that. On a spousal open work permit. We specialize in spousal open work permits. Spousal open, and on an immigration site too, that's a bit cheesy. Spousal open work permits should be easy, but applying takes time. Especially when it comes to all the documents. Navigating work permit rules can be intimidating. And there's always the fear that an incomplete application might be rejected. And then it says, take the mystery out of it. And it says, keep the documents secure in one place. You know, so I'm thinking this is obviously what she's looking to do, potentially, allegedly, in our mind over here, is try to get up and uh, see if she can bring Salah into, Salah into the country. I don't know if they're trying to see, and maybe that's why she's upset that she cannot get back to Kuwait is that maybe she wants to try to get back to Kuwait in order to start doing whatever and help Salau complete whatever he needs to complete inside that country in order to do whatever needs to get started for this uh, application process potentially. And I don't know if she then needs to get back into Canada or that's why she's going back and forth. 
And uh, even though she's saying she wants to live in Kuwait and stuff, in reality, uh, maybe they were hoping that she would come and settle an apartment and start bringing him over. And then maybe she's discovering that she needs to get over to Kuwait and get this, help him get this process started from what I'm reading from the spousal sponsor, just from these brief notes where it says about this outland where the sponsored spouse's country of citizenship or where they legally reside, that's where the application will be processed through a visa office there. And he obviously is not living in Canada. So this part is gone. And this part here, um, it says that that you obviously this this one doesn't count. So he needs to go to the visa office in Kuwait because that's where he legally resides and apply for that visa. And I don't know then if she needs to be living there or she just needs to make sure he's getting this paperwork done um, in order to try to bring him over on this work permit. And get him over and taking, you know, what it's... Oh, I thought I had some different information. Why have we got something about um, students now? I thought it's going to be a little bit more about the permits. But uh, anyway, to help him, you know, get whatever he needs to get together to get this work permit, to come on in on a work permit, potentially. And uh, help him start that or start the other process. And so now that she can't get into Canada, <laughs> she can't help him with any of this stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, sorry, not Canada, into Kuwait. Because I think obviously her mind is thinking she wants to get that visa office and get him over there and start this process and start moving him over to Canada. So I'm sure he's sweetening her up and he's still trying to move all this stuff about them going out to Malaysia and stuff, Salal end game is to get to Canada. It's always been his end game. He's not going to let it go until he gets there. He's going to sweeten her, tell her how much he loves her and baby and be in her chat and this, that, and the other. And she's getting frustrated because this is a lot of work potentially um, from what I can see. And then this is saying it's Canada's most trusted uh, immigration organization and it helps all of these people and the work permits and all of this stuff. So I'm thinking that this is a pretty good possibility of what these guys are up to. Um, it says, don't let the application process hold you back from your dream future with your spouse. And you know that Chantel wants a dream future with Salah in Canada. She's saying, no, I don't live in Canada because she doesn't want to people to know this is really what the game plan is because everyone said this is what the game plan is and if this does come to fruition and he does get to Canada and then he leaves her high and dry you know everyone's going to be saying we told you so I mean but this is going to take some time but let's see what they say your dream future with your husband shouldn't be <laughs> rests on a successful application one error one missing document can be the difference between success and failure. Don't risk doing it on your own or using a friend. And I'm sure it is pretty serious. I mean, these things, you really do have to dot your I's and cross your T's. I've handled a lot of paperwork in my lifetime, more than I care to have ever dealt with, including paperwork for Medicare. <laughs> mm. And if anybody knows what Medicare is like, then you understand and having to complete the most ludicrous amounts of paperwork in the healthcare environment dealing with medicare it's wild anyway i you know that's why these whole consultancies and all these businesses exist because of that don't risk it you know requirements change and sometimes quickly it's our business to keep up with the changing landscape your business is to be successful in Canada. You can't afford not to work with us. So I think she's working with this consultancy firm. That's why she's been so tight-lipped about saying anything about it. Maybe she's trying to bring him in through uh, international students 
But I'm guessing that she went and spoke to these people. And uh, I don't know how well it went. Um, who knows? I'm sure they gave her all sorts of stuff. So this company, um, who they are, they're the leading Canadian immigration consultancy. Uh, they've been providing excellence for over 15 years. So they have each, uh, they have clients, they take them through the entire immigration process and the uh, initial application, sorry, I'm getting dry here. Sorry, it's allergy season. To find little community integration. And if you know what, like, the antihistamines are, and even the loratadine, that, that drives me out. Anyway, to find all community integration upon arrival in Canada, working with world-leading brands and companies and all this stuff. So, obviously, if there's companies trying to bring their other uh employees from other countries over they help with that a lot of that stuff probably i'm sure okay they have a lot of faqs over here about um how do i get my permanent residency in canada do i need a language test we know some of that does speak english how do i get a work permit process for time application and then they have this interesting thing called pmp and it's a provincial nominees program. And they offer candidates an opportunity to retrieve their permanent residency with the support of an employer. And the applicant shall intend to settle in the province territory that has nominated them. And I've heard a lot of things about some of the things that they were talking about with immigration, with their wanting to give the I guess, permanent status to immigrants who are already residing in Canada rather than trying to go outside of the country and give opportunity to, to, to those who are already having Canada as their home. I, it, that was something that was on the HR immigration uh, Instagram page. And they have obviously this full range of service, express entry, work permits, provincial nominee programs and labor market programs, all these different services. I mean, tons of stuff, all of these, you know, things about the spousal work permits and all this stuff about all these things. So I think that Brooke did a pretty good investigative job there as to what potentially is foodie up to. <laughs> And we keep saying that he's trying to get to Canada. And she's like, no, he's not. No, girl, he is. Our commitment, opening the doors to Canada. We provide full legal representation. I mean, it's probably a big process. So she's probably, I'm sure it's not inexpensive either. So that's probably why she's putting out so many mukbangs and all this content, she needs to get back and then she probably needs to start to try to help pay for these services because maybe they're trying to hope that the next time she they she needs to cut back to Canada on a, you know, after her tourist visa comes to an end, that whatever visa that Salah, Salah, I'm sorry, needs to get completed at that office in Kuwait to come over as Chantel's genuine spouse, then, you know, he can do it that way. And, you know, he's been setting it up for a year at that fault box apartment in the sky with the cat and the hamster and, you know, all of these different couples channels and all of this stuff. So he's been able to get this person to use a public platform to set up what looks like a genuine relationship and to have her wearing the wedding ring and the hijab and the speaking about being a Muslim Reva. And she probably all into the fantasy and the dream and all this stuff. And she's committed, I believe, in getting this gentleman to Canada and is wanting to use this service, consultancy service to do so. So she's probably frustrated she can't get to Kuwait at the moment and help him get that visa process started so that they can stop planning to get themselves back to Canada. Because as much as she says, I think that's just 
th them not wanting people to know because he's telling her probably don't let people know don't let people know we don't want people you know because this is a long game this is a long game this man has been very well prepared to he's a young guy to put up with Chantel say that he's living in this apartment he gets to come in and out he sends her back to Canada all the time while she's probably trying to get some of this stuff done. And he probably almost messed it up last time with Kybella. And so she flew back over. And so he's been needing to kiss up back up to her, um, behave himself when she's, you know, around in order for him to try to keep this catfish going, this long game to get himself to Canada. He doesn't want to be living in the, you know, worn, torn Middle East. Maybe that's why they have all that ridiculous stuff where it's, you know, about this is the best place to live and stuff to throw people off the scent that he's trying to get to Canada and that, you know, they don't want anybody calling the game that this is not a genuine relationship and to call into any question that he is some type of catfish scammer and to alert the Canadian government or HR immigration that this gentleman is a catfish scammer that she met on Global Tender and married after two weeks and went to Kuwait. And not for them to investigate him as a as a as basically a love scam scammer, a tender swindler. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's uh kind of what potentially is going on. That's uh pretty cool, Brooke. I made it a little bit long, but I think it's worth kind of delving into this company and taking a quick peek see as to what they do. All right, let's just take a look at the distance between their office. So let me bring up, show where their office is located. So they have their Canada office, their Morocco office, the India office, and the Philippines office. And this is why I don't believe Chantel trying to immigrate to Kuwait. I think it's the other way around. I think this is a good call, Brooke. Okay, we got the Canada office here. There it is. And it is located in Ontario. Ontario. I'm sorry if I'm ruining all the names. Apologies, Canada. And I know that's the same province that Chantel is a resident of. Now, I know she wrote Ottawa in the planner, but we know she's a liar because she doesn't want people to kind of probably get onto this. And remember, she's like out early. She's complaining about gas prices. She is out getting like Tim Horton's breakfast. I mean, it's it's a road trip. She's, you know, it was a road trip. She was out on some time. And she hid a lot of the information on the screen, obviously, because maybe she didn't want people to know she wasn't going out to Ottawa, but she was going out to Ontario. Okay, so let's bring you over to this other uh, tab. I'm going to share this tab instead. So I put in the address, obviously, of HR Immigration. And if I take this off, it will disappear. So this is Cornwall. I don't know where in Cornwall she lives, and I wouldn't dox her anyway. But it is a four-hour and 32-minute drive, like literally straight down an interstate. So she could have easily had left early in the morning, really early, uh, four o'clock in the morning, a little bit earlier than that, set out a little bit earlier before four with one of her family members or whatever, somebody with her on the road trip, you know, cause Chantel, we don't know anything like she's her time's all over weird and had gone out and driven out to uh, this office out in Ontario and then come back home quite easily in a day. I mean, it's a long, it's not fun, but I've certainly, when I worked teaching English to teachers in Mexico would leave Mexico City and travel out to places like Puebla and drive out and come back. And they were long drives. So, I mean, it's not unusual. Or So, who knows? But I think that's a pretty good guess as to what HR is an acronym for. HR isn't an acronym for anything. HR is just called HR Immigration. <laughs> And the HR doesn't seem to be standing for anything that I can see. Uh, it's just called HR immigration. That's what it's called. I don't know if it stands for anything specifically the H and the R. It doesn't seem to. Uh, and so 
I think that's what she's up to with Salah. All right, guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you being here. But before we go out, I did want to tell you one thing because, you know, I think this is potentially the future of our friend Salah. And you know how he just, you know, loves himself in Canada from the way he always expresses it in his uh, comments and chats. But let's just make him feel at home, shall we? All right, so yeah, <laughs> not to interrupt that beautiful uh, national anthem, Canada, but yeah, so I guess uh, Salau is potentially wanting to say, oh, Canada instead. I guess maybe we'll have to just wait and see, shall we? Um, but anyway, I had another I thought about all of the situation, of course, as I was listening to O Canada, and now it's left my mind. So if I ever remember, but it's probably in regards to, you know, whatever scam these two. Oh, that's right. Free health care. Huh. I forgot about that one. <laughs> maybe that's, you know, possibly it too. Because healthcare very expensive, in you know in Kuwait. So he when he gets to Canada, he gets some some good healthcare as well. Oh my goodness, you know he gets foodie taking care of her healthcare, and then he gets the light out on her when he gets to Canada. Girl, mm -mm -mm, you're getting played, and we're warning you, but you're not gonna listen. All right, guys. If you did like the uh, investigation and uh, potentially what is Chantel up to, I would so love it if you guys could subscribe to my channel. I'm always at 2,500, which is my new. I get it. But every little bit helps. And if you can leave a comment. And in the chat, uh, what can we leave in the chat this time? Leave me a Canadian maple leaf. Just a maple leaf or anything like really super Canadian, even a flag. Just, just Canada. We love you guys. You're some of my favorites. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Okay. Take care. Bye.